Hey guys, welcome to the 20 Minute Bible Study. My name is Vince Miller. So excited to be with you again today. Until you hear the topic, the topic today is accountability. And I believe that we all want and need more accountability in our life. It's just that we don't like it, right? Accountability is something that's hard to come by. In fact, I want you to listen to Steve Young today. Steve Young, NFL quarterback, inducted into the Hall of Fame. He's sharing on a college campus post his NFL induction, and he's talking about how he refused to embrace accountability in his life until this one moment in time that he stopped mitigating. Listen in as Steve Young shares the secrets of his success. I don't remember exactly how many touchdowns I've thrown in my career, but I, I remember the exact number of interceptions that I've thrown. And if I combine all those numbers of interceptions over college and pros, 202. Because you remember the screw-ups. You know, you just re they're, they're so dramatic. Because, in essence, the team has given me the responsibility of, of doing something good, and then I did something bad. And it took me a number of years to figure out the secret to getting the team back on the field with a fervor to go believe that you're not going to do it again. Because you've just, in front of 80,000 people, messed it up. And so for the first few years of my career, whenever I would do that, I would go into this, 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 this uh, recitation of all the intervening and mitigating circumstances that had led to this thing. Because I certainly didn't do it on purpose. I didn't drop back and throw it to the other team like on purpose. I didn't, I didn't do it to screw the whole day up and make everyone boo me. That wasn't really my, what I looked forward to. But, so I wanted to explain it. I had all these intervening things that had happened. I, you, the guy came for you, the sun, the moon, the, the, the spa was wet, the, the, the guy turned the wrong way. You guys got to understand, I didn't mean to do this. And everyone would look at me like, they didn't really have a, they just, we just wallowed around. It wasn't until a day that I turned to them when I would throw another interception, because inevitably you do, and said to them right into their face, look, it's my fault. I messed it up. Now let's go to the sidelines, let's get a drink of water, rest up, we'll come back on the field, we'll go down and score, we'll win the game. We won't do it, that won't happen again. Inevitably, you got people charged because they recognize accountability. They recognize that yes, at that moment, they needed accountability. Not mitigating and intervening circumstances to explain all the things why your homework was late, or why the car, or why you didn't get the job done, or why you, it, it, once you get a final foundation of strict accountability in your life, you can, I think you start to really, the ethics grow out of that. And I haven't thought about it enough. Maybe ethics are first and then the accountability. I'm not sure, I haven't thought about it. But I just know that when you talk about those elements, I learned point blank in that situation that I, if I am ultimately accountable for what I do and how I do it, and I don't look for intervening circumstances to try to explain it away, that I'm gonna be really much more ethical in my behavior. Well, I don't know if you caught it or not, but Steve was very specific about what drives results in his life, right? He was very specific about it. He said it was this moment that he stopped mitigating circumstances. That's explaining, blaming, and deflecting to other people and their issues. He started owning it. And I think that's a significant moment because we all understand that accountability drives success. It's true for any individual and any team. The more accountability, the more success. And it produces incredible results on any team. It drives up morale, clarifies priorities, it increases engagement and trust on a team. It does so much for a team and an individual, yet we push back on it and we don't need to. In fact, we would say that our spiritual lives are the most important part of our lives but it's the one place we see the least amount of accountability in all our lives. If we really wanna produce spiritual results in our life, still based on grace, not obedience, but on grace, we will lean into spiritual accountability, but often I find that churches are not endorsing it or even embracing positive forms of spiritual accountability. We just reinforce blaming, and explaining, or environments that don't even have it in it, and we don't fully understand it, well, today we wanna to dive in and really understand. So when we come back, gentlemen, we will dive into a little bit of Bible study and a little bit of discussion with a special guest that will help us to unpack this even further. 
Get your day started right. Sign up for the Men's Daily Devotional at mensdevo.org. That's mensdevo.org. They're short, sweet, and to the point. Read them and share them with the men you know. And get into God's Word daily. Hey, Scott, thanks for being with us again, man. You're a token Hebrew Greek nerd and you got some counseling experience, et cetera, et cetera. Thanks for being with us. You know, we're uh, discussing a little bit of accountability here and I want you to listen to something. I I think this is really probing and interesting. It's uh, Patrick Lencioni speaking at a national conference. Just just dial in for a second, Okay. okay? Why is it so important that we get real commitment? Well, that sounds obvious. But the real reason why, there's a practical reason, because if we don't get commitment, then we're going to have the next dysfunction at our doorstep. And that is the avoidance of accountability. God bless you. This is the worst, most common problem. We have an online team assessment that teams take, and they get a scorecard back of this triangle that says green, yellow, red, which of the ones are good or bad. And this is usually the lowest score. What happens is when people haven't committed to a decision, they're not going to have the courage to hold one another accountable for that, for the behavior that goes with it. They're not going to have the courage to hold one another accountable. Notice what I said there. I didn't say the leader holding them accountable. I said them holding one another accountable. You see, on great teams, accountability is peer-to-peer. Peer pressure in your organization is the best kind of accountability. You want people turning to one another. What's the opposite of that is when people see a team member not supporting something, they go, oh, hey, boss, I want to tell you, she's not supporting this. Don't tell her it was me that told you, but I just want you to know. Then the boss is like, oh, great, I get to go. And he goes to that person, hey, I understand you're not doing it. Who told you that? Oh, don't worry about who told you. I just want to, and now they're wondering who ratted them out. And <laughs> don't you love politics, that? Isn't that so ratted? true? Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I don't, I don't know what you think about that word of accountability, but I, I think that it's this... I mean, accountability is this awkward dance that we have with each other. What What do you say about uh, this issue of accountability? Yeah, I have definitely have a love hate relationship with that word. Okay, say more. Uh, on two levels, on a personal level, because you know I don't necessarily always want to be held accountable for my own stuff. Right. And then on the way the Christian world has used it as well, where it. You're, you're encouraged to be in accountability groups, but so often it's, um, it's, it becomes tit for tat. Okay. It becomes checking boxes and, uh, did you, did you memorize your verse this week or did you, you know, like it, it can get real, it can tip over into legalism and more behavior modification. Yeah. And it's, yeah. yeah, And it's accountability is not about behavior management. Yeah, exactly. So I hear you saying two things. I'm going to repeat them back to you in simplicity. I'm going to hear it. It requires courage to lean into it. And I think Patrick said that in his uh, talk here, you know, it's, it takes courage to lean into it. But on the other side of the equation, we don't really know what accountability is or how to embrace it in a healthy way. Yeah. Right. And then, then we have this love hate relationship with this thing, Yeah. yeah. but, but we know that we need it. Right. I mean, you need it. Yeah, absolutely. I I need it, but we don't experience healthy versions of accountability. I mean, when is the last time you've really experienced a healthy version of it? Well, I thankfully have a healthy practice in my life where I get on the phone every week with a good buddy Mm -hmm. who lives uh, out of state. And uh, we keep each other accountable. Mm -hmm. And we check in on all the major categories of our life. We check in on areas of weakness, areas where we've struggled historically. Mm -hmm. Check in on those things. So I choose to put myself into accountability weekly. Okay, so I want to say two things about that. First off, I rarely hear that. You're aware of this, right? Oh, yeah. I rarely hear this story, right? You and I both do this, right? Not together, but with other people. Yep, yep. And number two... I would, you would probably tell me that your life has changed because of this one practice. Oh, absolutely. It's huge. Yeah. Otherwise I would be in hiding like, uh, some people that I think you're going to bring up later (laughs) in this, uh, in this, uh, exactly, exactly. This is, it's such a, an interesting dynamic, right? Like we, we don't know exactly how to do accountability in the Christian kingdom. And I, you know, one of my friends, Joe Morgan, uh, who I've been on his podcast uh, before, he says, our issue is 
A B T. We ain't been taught how okay. to do it. I just think it's a it's an incredible look mm. at the the heart of men and what we really need sometimes. But we ain't been taught. And I would add to that: there's no shame in learning. <laughs> That's right. There is no shame in learning, right? But people feel so ashamed if they don't know something. Yes. And like we don't have to, if we don't know it, we don't know it. Why so we... there's there's not even shame. There's not just shame from being held accountable. There's shame in trying to learn something new that we don't know even know how to do, right? right? You know, and I think a lot of people out there in spiritual terms understand that their spiritual life is the most important part of their life. Yet rarely do we see any accountability there. Mm-hmm. And I think it's just the sad state of, I'd say, the Christian church today. And yet I would say, you would say, it's probably the one factor in your life that is probably most contributed to a better, healthy you. It's what uh, turned the corner for with sexual addiction for myself is when I entered recovery in 2004, I entered into sexual accountability groups for two years. And, you know, like Boom. that account Boom. Of, that accountability yeah. has just yeah. had to continue in my life to continue to do right. my best to walk that out. And, and it's not just about sexual accountability anymore, I would assume. It's probably about positive things as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and absolutely. Yeah, we spend a lot of time talking about how we're doing well yeah, as well. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, it can be encouraging. Well, I want to look at a text today from the Bible. Cool. You know, people hiding from accountability. It's the very first story of accountability, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, okay. We all know it. Genesis 3. So I'm going to read the text okay. and we'll dive in and right look on. at it a little bit together. So Genesis 3, 8 through 13. Great words here. And of course, we know what's happening. Adam and Eve have just sinned. Right. Mm -hmm. And then God walks in. Okay, so here's what happens. Verse eight. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees in the garden, as if we can hide. Mm -hmm. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked. Or if you're from the south, naked. And I hid myself (laughs) and he said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree, which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, the woman you gave to me to be with, she gave me the fruit of the tree and I ate. And then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this that you have done? The woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. Oh, very interesting, isn't it? (laughs) Yeah. Can I react? (laughs) Yeah, react to this. So... I think, wow, I'm connecting dots to the clip you played, mm-hmm. and he talked about peer-to-peer, and how are we hearing God's tone in this? Are we hearing, where are you? Where are you? Yeah. Or are we hearing, like, a father's heart who's broken, like, where are you, son? Yeah. Where are you, daughter? Like, yeah. what have you done? Yeah. Like, I mean, the human race just... Yeah. Right. was compromised for forever. Yeah. And, which, which do you think it was, probably? Well, okay, here's... <laughs> I feel like it's a father who loves yeah. them, and this is why, because it's uh, that word sound is the same word for voice. Mm-hmm. So, like, what is God's sound? What is God's voice? And they're walking and talking with him in the cool of the day, which is, mm-hmm. in, in Hebrew, is ruach, it's yeah. spirit. In, spirit the, yeah. in the spirit of the day, like, they're... They're walking with the Spirit and with God. And and then they hid themselves from the presence. That's the word faces mm-hmm. in Hebrew, which is totally bizarre that God's faces are plural. Like, what yeah, is that? All, right, what are all right. the impl- yeah. implications of that? I think it's just because he has so many names in Scripture. But, like, they, from, from, they don't want to see God's faces or face yeah. anymore because they're so ashamed. But God wants to still be face to face with them. Yes. God wants to come to them. And where are you, son and daughter? What have you done? And okay, I and I have a plan to restore this too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is a just dancing with yeah. meaning, isn't it? It's there's so much to be discovered from these words. And go ahead, what were you gonna say? I was just gonna say that th- this is the heart of accountability. That tone. Yes. So like you and I are wrestling with what is accountability and what what is healthy, positive accountability. Mm-hmm. It's, it's that kind of a tone. Does my friend hold me accountable weekly in anger and hatred, or does he hold me accountable in love? Yeah. And I think he holds me accountable in love, and I think God holds us accountable in love. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's interesting, isn't it, that I, I would say it is that voice for sure, and we want it to be that voice yeah. at least, and I think God would beckon 
mm. that voice from his his thundering voice yeah. would be both strong and gentle, absolutely. wouldn't it? It absolutely. would be. It would absolutely. It would take on both. Let's say just for a second, masculine and feminine qualities, yeah, right? Yeah, it yeah. would have a strong weakness to it and a gentleness, mm-hmm. right? But I think what's interesting about it is, is that as God leans into this, he is not scared of accountability at all. Right. He's, he's all about it. I mean, God is someone that we are held accountable to. He beginning faces and situations. He doesn't run from them. He doesn't. That's a great principle. He absolutely does not run from this moment. He leans into it. Okay, so there are three ways that people usually act in relationships, relational styles. They either move toward people, they either move against people, or they move away from people. Mm -hmm. And so as you're thinking about listeners and even Vince, as you and I think about our own lives, when the going gets tough, Mm -hmm. do we move toward people? Do we Mm -hmm. move against people, like Mm kind of angsty, or do we move away? And so often, like Adam and Eve here, they moved Mm -hmm. away. But like we need to move into face to face. We need to move back into face to face with God, face to face with others. Mm -hmm. We need to move toward people, not away. Yeah, and lean into the issues rather than Mm -hmm. run from them. And I think it's really interesting because in this moment we see blaming, blaming, Mm -hmm. and explaining, and you can almost feel the shame. Like you can, I'm experiencing this shame. Yeah. Right. That's that's true. I I mean, I can see it. I can feel it. I can experience it. There's this awareness that there's feelings that they've never experienced before in their life. These are all brand new to them. They're running, they're hiding. Mm. It's just, it's bizarre. They experienced because they did something they shouldn't have. They experienced a shame. Feelings were overwhelming them. And then God is kind of trying to come toward them. I think that's interesting. He's yeah. pursuing them and not in a hell bent kind of way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even though their decision not is to led. find them and crush them. Right. Absolutely not. But to come to move toward them and they just kind of keep running and hiding, which is exactly the human response to sure. accountability sometimes. Yeah. But I think it's because often we ain't been taught. Mm. Right? I mean, if you think about this, it's intuitive and almost impulsive for us to experience feelings of shame of blaming, yeah. of explaining, but it is not intuitive for us to understand the impulse of leaning in courageously to accountability. Mm-hmm. And they're going to have to learn it here. Yeah, yeah. And I think that God expects us to lean into that as well, that yeah. we have to lean into a desire, a willingness, as Patrick Lencioni was saying, being courageous to lean into that accountability. And of course, we understand that God is going to hold him accountable for this, yeah. right? He's going to punish all of them, all three of them, the serpent, man, and woman in the next verses here right. for the wrong that they've done. And they're going to have to embrace that for the rest of their life and all their existence, right? right? Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know, but we have something to learn here yeah. about accountability that I think is very valuable. Well, I can give an example too, personally, of getting into being confronted by my wife about things. Yeah. And over time... She didn't necessarily realize this over time, but eventually she said, why every time do I confront you that I end up getting confronted as well? And I didn't realize I was doing it. (laughs) And I had to stop and go, you're right. Like when you come to me with a confrontation, really what I'm doing is what Adam and Eve are doing. If I turn Mm. the tables and if I try to make it about her or I try to bring up an equal issue about her or something like that, like I'm doing what Adam and Eve are doing. I'm trying to pass the buck on to the next person, you know, well, it was da, 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 da. That made me do this, that, or the other thing, get defensive. We don't have to be defensive when somebody holds us accountable because God is our defender. Bingo. We don't have but to we defend don't see ourselves. It that way. Yeah, but we don't see it that way. We kind of feel backed into a corner because of shame, because of guilt, because we probably are afraid. We run and hide just like everybody else. And it's so true. I'm so glad that you gave that example. And here's why. About seven years into my marriage, I used four words that changed my relationship with my wife in the same exact moment that you're talking about. Mm. And they were the words, you may be right. And I got to tell you, that transformed my marriage. My wife expected me to attack her on something back as Mm. she was coming at me. And it wasn't fair. She was making a character assassination in an argument. You know, have you been a part of that moment before where there's some little character assassination in the middle of an argument? You go, what was that about? And I responded with, you may 
be right. And she just turned white as a ghost. And I was like, she's speechless right now. What happened? And it was my willingness to not fight anymore. I just kind of gave in and I discovered that she was actually right about something that she was making a comment about me. And it, it turned the conversation suddenly toward and away from me deflecting and me explaining and blaming her for the way that she brought it up. Right. You were willing to hear her voice and her sound, just yeah. like God coming in the garden. Yeah. Like he came with his voice and sound and mm-hmm. like, can we just hear it yeah. and receive it? Yeah. Well, thanks for being with us today, guys. Uh, thank you so much for being with us again. I hope that maybe this week that you'll lean into a little bit of accountability in your life because uh, we all need it. Maybe try using the words, you may be right yeah. with somebody else and, and courageously embrace positive accountability in your life so that you can grow and become the the believers, the followers that God really wants you to be. We'll, We're better together. <laughs> we are, aren't we? Then apart. We're way better together. That's great. So guys, join us again here next time on another episode of the 20 Minute Bible Study. And till then, do everything that you can to fight apathy and get off that bench and into the game. <laughs>